Hello, my name is Kay Carley and I'm one of Paper Arts' Eclectica Designers. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use stencil PS328, which is this one. So let's get right to it. So stencil PS328 has been designed to go with stamp set EKC58 and also stamp set EKC60. You'll see within the stencil itself, or on the stencil itself, you've got lots of different elements on here. So we've got the wheat or grass border. We've got these two flower heads up here, which represent the poppy heads that correspond with the poppy heads on EKC60. These have been perfectly sized to match so that you can easily add color to these flower heads. So they match perfectly, as does the cornflower element here. So that also perfectly matches the cornflower stamp, as you can see. Let me just line that up correctly, like that. And it's also got this extra little bit here. That is so that you can then bring that down if you want to and add further shading to this area to help stand this part out from the background petals there. We've got a smaller cornflower head and I'll come to that in a bit. We've got the poppy seed head which corresponds to the poppy seed head here. Again enabling you to quickly colour this stamped image. And then we've got these two elements here which correspond with these flowers on EKC58. So you can see if I place that over and just twist that slightly so that lines up, that enables you to quickly add colour to this flower if you want to. And the same with this one. It's going to enable you to quickly Add colour using the fresco finished paints to that flower head as well if you so wish. But it has been designed to be used on its own as well. And this is what I want to show you. So I have prepared my panel already. So I've got my panel here all ready to go. And the idea is with all these different elements, let's pop that back on there for you to see a bit better. So all these different elements, apart from these two, these two might be a little bit big, although you could pop these on the top of the stems if you wanted. It would work quite well. But you can see how I've separated the grass heads from the stems, or the wheat heads, or wheat spikes. And that is so that you've got the option then of either using these as it is, so using that entire image there as it is, or you can just paint the stems or stencil the stems and add different flowers onto those stems. So that is what I want to show you. So I'm going to just begin by creating my background. So let me just get my workspace organised here. As always, I'm using Fresco Finish Paint. And I've got Granny Smith here to begin with. Just going to give that a shake. Bring my palette in, which is a piece of tin foil. It's what I always tend to work on. Just going to pop out a small amount. I'll probably need a little bit more than that, but that will do for now. Now I'm going to bring my stencil just to one side of my panel like that. I'm going to take my stencil brush, again it is a dome stencil brush. I'm going to pick up my paint and work that in. As always you don't actually want any visible wet paint there on your brush. And I'm just going to begin stenciling along my panel. Now, I don't want this to be too 
intenser colour. So where possible, you can see as I've taken some of that paint off down the base there, I'm starting to sort of swipe or stroke the paint more rather than actually tap. That's going to give me a lighter coverage. When it comes to these grass heads or wheat spikes, then you are going to need to tap. I'm just going to work my way across this whole panel. She'll move my stencil along. So you can see I've got just very faded and faint there grasses, which is what I'm after. And I'm just going to move my stencil along and continue there with my border. So that has got a background there of grasses. And say, so this is so faint, all these little accumulations here of paint that I'm not worried about those. It's just the background. So now I'm going to come back. I'm going to move the stencil so it's no longer perfectly lined up with what I've done before. Might sort of start over this area now. And I'm going to put through a different color of green. So I'm going to come now with lawn. Just give that a little shake again and pop that out onto my palette. Just going to take off some of the green that's on my stencil brush here. And pick that up, tap that in. And because these stems are going to be in front of my lighter green stems, I'm going to start tapping now. But as I come up to the wheat or grass, I'm stopping. I'm literally just doing the stems themselves now. Okay, you can see I've now finished stenciling my stems here. And I'm going to start adding some flowers to the tops of these stems. I'm just going to take the stencil brush that I've been using for my green, the lawn, I'm just going to stroke that up. So just like that, I'm going to take my other dome stencil brush, pick up periwinkle, tap that in and tap in for my flower. There we go. So you can see how I'm starting there to add to my stem. I'm going to take my smaller brush, pick up Southern Skies, tap that in, and just gently add some shading to that. loading up again and I'm just going to deepen up. So this isn't about being really clever with your shading or anything like that. It's just about adding some colour there to it. Then I'm going to go on to my next one. So it's got our some tall cornflowers there. Then you've got these elements which are supposed to represent smaller poppies. So let's add some of these in. Now I've got Peachy Keen. I'm going to decant some of that. Also got Tango. And we'll decant some of that as well. 
and London Boss. So Peachy Keen is an opaque, that's going to block out colour for me. London Bus and Tango are both translucents. And let's go with some different stencil brushes. So these are just going to go into water that I've been using. So loading up my brush and going to begin adding some poppy heads to some of these. So that is going to take just a couple of layers here of the paint to block that out. Now let's maybe have this one here. So while that's drying I'm just going to continue with a different one. And then I'll come back. Okay. So there's the beginnings there of my poppies. And then just going to take, let's go with a smaller stencil brush. So take my smaller brush now into Tango, load up. And tap and just coming as you can see from the top just to give it an orangey tinge and I'm going to do that for each of them and then going to load up with London bus we're going to flick back the other way so I'm going to start at the base now and flick back so towards the top now to create my poppy. Now I've still got a couple of stems left here and you can take a different flower so perhaps you might want this flower or you may want the smaller cornflower even on those stems. And you just carry on in that vein, creating your composition in this way. And you can just keep this going as much as you like. So you could come down, put in some more stems and have some more flowers down here as well. But I hope that's given you a good idea on how to go about using this stencil just on its own. But I've got a few samples as well to show you. So here is one of the cards where I've used the stamped elements from EKC5, no EKC60, so the cornflower and the wheat or tall grasses and then I've used the stencil as you can see to create my grasses at the back here and these poppies here. With this one, again, use that stencil to create my poppies, my smaller poppies, stencil to create these tall grasses. And then I use the corresponding poppy heads on that stencil to color in my stamped images. So here's another one where well, I've used those elements. Let me just pull in my clean stencil. So I've used these elements here to create my background flowers. And also I used it as a base for my stamped flowers. And again, you can see those grasses in the background. This one shows how I've used those poppy heads. This time I did the poppy heads first and just popped in stems to those heads. And here's that poppy seed head as well. And of course those grasses. This one shows 
how I've stenciled those stems, added the grasses to some of the stems and then the flowers. So these flowers here are these. Same vein as well with this one. Occasionally added one of the grasses to the stem, the flowers and this little flower here is this one. So it's the top of the cornflower. You know I use this to come through here. Also makes a really nice daisy and then just added some green there to make it look more daisified. And this one just shows how I've used the gra uh, sorry the stems with the cornflower heads. Two different sizes, so I've used the bigger one and the smaller one as well. And I didn't use this section here, so I just did periwinkle first and then stroked over southern skies and just deepened up in certain areas. And this one corresponds to these two down here. So I hope that's given you a few ideas on how to use stencil PS328. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye.